In the 80s and most of the 1990s, car audio competition classes were divided by amplifier power ratings at 4 ohms. This sparked a whole new classification of amplifiers called cheater amps, which were rated as low as 25 watts per channel at 4 ohms, yet would do 400 watts when loaded down to 1 ohm. Although Orion started this back in the mid-1980s with the 225 HCCA, mid-90s and so we had amplifiers such as the US Amps VLX25, which was only rated at 12.5 watts per channel at 4 ohms, yet did nearly 600 watts when loaded down at 1 ohm mono or half an ohm stereo. And my tests have shown even though this amp was rated 12 and a half watts by two at four ohms, it actually did around 70 watts by two. Not to be outdone, Soundstream introduced a Class A 5.0 in 96, which was rated 12 and a half watts per channel at four ohms. And later in 98, they developed the Class A 5.2, which was rated 0.25 watts by two at four ohms. Yes, we're talking one quarter of a watt by two. Let's look at the 1998 car audio and electronics directory. We can see the class A 5.2 by Soundstream, $719 then equates to $1,390 in 2025. The class A 5.2 nicknamed Sleeping Beauty because it's barely breathing at four ohms with a power rating of only one fourth watt per channel roars to life at low impedances where it's capable of producing 1,000 times its rated four ohm power. Now, it's not easy to find these Rubicon Class A 5.2s. It took me quite a while to find one. A guy named Keith in Canada hooked me up. Let's take a look here at one end of the amp. We have a 60 amp fuse. We have 12 volt ground and remote. The 12 volt and ground accept up to 4 gauge. The remote accepts up to 12 gauge. Then we have the speaker terminals. Those accept up to 8 gauge. This is a stereo amplifier, which is also bridgeable. This amp also auto switches between high current and high power mode based on the LED color. Also has subsonic and Hawking's bass control and clipping indicators for right and left channel. The Hawking's bass control controls frequency as well as the Q. Also we have level input for left and right channel, balanced input and regular RCA inputs as well. On the top a switch for mono, summed or stereo. Also balanced or unbalanced for left and right signal inputs. Like the previous Rubicon Renoir I showed off, this one also has a little plastic chrome plated shield here to cover up your speaker terminals if you'd like. As for ratings, quarter of a watt per channel at four ohms, 100 watts by two at two ohms, and then one ohm, half an ohm, and quarter ohm, 250 by two. As far as bridge ratings, four ohms, 200 watts, two ohms, one ohm, and half an ohm, 500 watts. As for dimensions, it matches the Rubicon Renoir, 12.25 by 9.8 by 2.2 inches. Millimeter equivalents are there as well. Now let's get this amp wired up so we can fire it up and make sure it works. Let's power it up. In high current mode, ready to go. Let's try it out. Now that we have the amp all wired up, let's fire up the SMD Demore Engineering Amplifier Dyno so we can test the power output of this amplifier. If you haven't seen these tests before, on the left, you see the power output in watts. In the middle, the ohm load. On the right, the voltage of the dyno. We'll also have the remote clamp so we can estimate the efficiency of this Class AB amplifier. Here I'm seeing the overlap on the amplifier, getting 10 dB matched per channel, adjusting the uh, level here and setting up the head unit there you can see we're good to go first up we're going to try the amp with the two channel test loading both of the channels at four ohms the amplifier is rated 0 0.25 watts by two at 12.6 let's try it out here certified takes us to one percent distortion one kilohertz is the test tone and as you can see <laughs> About 68 watts per channel on average at 14.24. Now, this amplifier is regulated, has a regulated power supply. So even if we went back down to 12 volts, we would not see much difference in the output power. That's why I kept around 14. Uncertified, about the same. 
and then we reset it here for the dynamic burst which sends a pulse tone into the amp in this case one kilohertz pulse tone and there you can see it's a little bit less but these soundstream amps typically have the same output power in all three tests so let's listen to some music Going crazy. Moving on to the 2 ohm test where it's rated 100 watts by 2 at 12.6 volts. We're going to run the test again at 1 kilohertz certified, takes us up to 1% distortion and easily get there about 136 watts per channel average at 14 volts. Now some people ask why is channel 2 always lower than channel 1? Well I think the resistors inside are just slightly different in the amp dyno that causes channel 2 just to be a little bit lower than channel one, but it's not a significant difference at all. If you look at the percentage wise, it's like less than 1%. Let's move to the dynamic test here. And here you can see, again, all three of these tests are not much different, but we got 139 and 133. Let's hook back up some music though, and listen to the sweet sounds. Now to the 1 ohm test rated 250 by 2. Let's wake up Sleeping Beauty. Find out if we can get that 250 by 2. Certified 1 kilohertz. Can we? Yes, sir, we can. Right about 252 watts per channel average, 13.75. Nice. Let's try it up to the clipping point. See if we get a little bit more. Here we go. Hold your breath. Can we do it? And yeah, a little bit more, 273 and 260, 13.63. Now we'll run that dynamic test and see, can we get any more than 270 dynamic? And again, this amp is not exciting between the three different modes. It's like so close, but there you have it. 269, 259, 13.92. You can see we have the amp switched into the mono position. We have it bridged using the outer two terminals. Right is the positive, left negative is the negative. And we have four gauge power and ground going in. So let's try it out, see how it does bridged. All right, we're ready for the bridge mono test of the Class A 5.2 by Soundstream. First off, four ohms is rated 200 watts, 12.6 volts. Again, we'll be a little bit higher than that. This is a regulated power supply amp, so not much difference. Certified. 1% THD, 277, it jumped to 289 right there at the end. 289 at 14.15, so it easily does the rated power plus some. Let's try it up to the clipping point. Can we best that 289? Here we go. And yeah, we can just a little bit, 294 right at 14 volts. Reset the dyno here for the pulse track. Again, one kilohertz tone here. Pulse track at four ohms. Can we bust 300? No, we're gonna stay at 284. 284, 14.22. <laughs> Moving right along to the 2 ohm mono test, rated 500 watts. Can we get it? Let's try certified 1% THD. Can we get 500? Yes, we can. 515, 13.87. Reset the dyno here to try the uncertified track. For those curious, during the sound tracks there, I don't have that EQ hooked up through the signal chain. I'm just using it for display. So don't worry about it. We're not coloring the sound in any way. Uncertified, we get 567, 13.67. What about dynamically? Sending a pulse tone of one kilohertz into the amp. 
once again, all three modes pretty close. 559 right at 14 volts. But you know we got to hook up some more music so we can get some more sounds because you want to hear it. Here it comes. All right, forget the soft stuff. Let's have some jams. <laughs> Now we're going to fully wake up Sleeping Beauty here with the 1 ohm mono test. It's rated 500 watts once again. Same as 2 ohms. Let's see what we get. Certified 1% distortion. Check this out. We're right at 700 watts. Wow. 698. 13.52. We'll reset the dyno here to try the uncertified test. Takes us up to clipping. We'll see something very interesting here. Why does it not get as much? 619. 13.48 well decided maybe i needed to power cycle the amp so i did power cycle the amp because i thought the modes might have switched and sure enough we did get a little bit more power once i did that 702 13 and a half volts next we'll reset the dyno here to try the dynamic track see if we can best that 700 watts and yeah these amps just don't have a lot of dynamic reserve power you can see 601 13.79 but still well above that rated power and here are all the results of the rubicon class a 5.2 i have the stereo results here in the next screen i'll have the mono results efficiencies mid 50s to low 60s not too bad overall and i know you're asking what about the quarter ohm stereo the half ohm bridge mono well if you stick to the end of the video i will show some lower ohm tests but you have to remember this amp auto switches into the high current mode so don't expect big numbers Hint, hint. Now, early in 1999, Car Sound Magazine tested this amplifier, and I'm going to read you what they said. We observed almost 800 watts bridge into a 1 ohm resistive load with this amplifier. Now, I know I got about 700 watts, but 800, I'm not sure about that. I think I might have to get out my card here from a friend, R.I.P. Larry Frederick. This is not a Mickey Mouse program. Now let's take the screws out of the amplifier. There's two on either side and also three across the top. So we can take a closer look at the insides of this Rubicon Class A 5.2. And here we have it, the guts of the Soundstream Class A 5.2. This one has red circuit board. I think most of the Rubicon or all the Rubicons have the red circuit boards and to me, these really need a plexiglass bottom because they are beautiful. The different colors, the designs with the resistors and all the different capacitors, all the components laid out looks very nice. As you can see, as typical Soundstream during this time, transistors are squashed between the circuit board and the heat sink. Soundstream Technologies here, silk screen on the amp. Class A 5.2, 1998 Power supply has 16 volt, 2200 microfarad capacitors. There are seven of those total. Also, we have 50 volt, 1000 microfarad for the rails. And we can also see this little switch. And what the heck is it for? It doesn't even say anything in the manual. But if you look close, it says air base out or in. That's right. This amp was capable of the air base 2000 wireless subwoofer control. If anybody has one of these, let me know. I haven't seen many in my lifetime. 40,000 at zero ohm zero now as i stated earlier we're going to try this amp at lower impedances on the amp dyno you will see the light here will go from red to green what green means is high current mode this lowers the rail voltage of the amplifier making it more compatible with these extremely low ohm loads so let's try it first at 0.8 again this is bridge mono so that's 0.4 stereo <laughs> and here we go 632 dynamic 13.93 not more than that 700 that we saw earlier though at one ohm let's try 0.67 again one kilohertz burst as you can see with the low rail voltage the amplifier is clamping down on its power some so we're not getting much more 565 it's actually lowered quite a bit here then we'll try half an ohm 
This is half an ohm bridge on a stereo amp is quarter ohm per channel stereo. And we're getting right at that 700 watts with this test. 690, half an ohm, 13.4. Now for the old school Orion fan, I know you guys know about the Concept series amplifiers, specifically the Concept 97.3. This one came out in 97 and it was rated half a watt per channel at four ohms and up to 1,024 watts at 0 0.0078125 ohms. And yes, we will test one of those in a future video. I appreciate you guys as always for watching. Make sure you smash me the thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you like my content. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here. Even though I offer all of the solutions, I wish you love me like I love you. It's stupid. When I'm alone with you, I never feel lucid. I wish I wasn't struck by Cupid. I wish we not.